Hello, everybody. Um, hopefully, just checking levels. Yes, okay, I think we're going out now. Uh, hey, everyone, uh, we're, you're we're just back. in time <laughs> for mod qualifying for round, uh, uh, sorry, heat two. Um, heat yeah, three, so top heat of... Uh, top heat, yes, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm all still confused. Uh, yes, so yeah, uh, we had a power cut, track had a power cut, and um, it was between races, so... Um, but we had internet issues after that, so. But we're back. Thank you very much to uh, James out in California, where they're streaming the H2GP this weekend. We'll talk about that more later. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're back. I'm Frank. James is on the mic, and he will talk you through uh, round three. This is the fast guys. So I think what we'll do, we'll get this modified out of the way, and then we'll bring you up to speed with what happened in stock after that, although as we go into the, the next round of stock. So we'll get this one out of the way. What are we looking for in stock? We have had Ollie Payne winning the last round. We had Michael Olowski winning the first two. Alex Hagberg also looking fast. As you can see, Michael Olowski off first, so he has got, uh, or he has the quickest time. Michael Olowski going to lead away then with his, uh, I believe he's running at the plain white body shell. So it's kind of ebbing and flowing between him and Ollie. So Michael leads away from Ollie. Michael going to try and drop the hammer, escape at the start. Ollie coming back at him a little bit towards the end of the run. Two rounds for Michael, one round for Ollie. So far, Jan Rathyski having done the third fastest time. It's uh, gonna be three from six to count, this round number four. Orlowski currently leading this one by around, in fact, after three laps, we've got uh, Ollie Payne hits the front. So let's move our focus back one car. Onto the car of Ollie Payne. Uh, Ollie Payne, the white and red number two colored car. He's on the main straight now. Chasing down the Yeah, Ollie Payne, that is Ollie's car that we've got on shot. Just trying to chase down the car of Michael Orlowski. I think a uh, little bit confusing that Mark Reinhardt's now running something that looks kind of quite similar in terms of design uh, to Ollie's car. Mistake from Orlowski puts Ollie to the front. So Olowski parks his car in the barrier. Ollie Payne hits the front on the track as well as on the clock. Mistake there for Ollie as well off the end of the main straight. Jan Rathyski will be rubbing his hands together, not literally because he's holding a transmitter, but he'll be just trying to take advantage of that. Alex Hagberg up into second place as well. Alex starting a little bit further down the field. Uh, good round score from Alex last time. He had a third in round. We are with Ollie Payne, leader. Mark Reinhardt also up there in the mix as well. Uh, looking at projected times. Uh, in fact, what have we got? 40, 46 lap runs coming together. 40 showing possibly a 47 for Mark Reinhardt who started towards the back of the field. Let's see if we can spot Mark. We haven't really focused on him this weekend. He is running his usual race paint, which is the white, pink, and blue colored car. He's down the main straight now. So we're running with Mark Reinhard car. That's actually starting to look pretty decent. Just looking at Mark on the driver's roster and chicken wing, not yet in attendance, but Reinhard moves to the front now. So Mark could be putting himself in the mix with this one. Looking pretty hooked up. Fires out on towards the main straight. That's Alessio Mazzio. Mark not really featured so far this weekend.
but sitting at the front at the moment, predicting a 47.802. Uh, Ollie predicting a 47.806. So Mark heading for a time some four seconds faster than Ollie at the moment, expecting these times to drop off. Mark now heading towards the back of Alex Hagberg's car. So we'll start to see Alex's car just disappearing out the front of shot there. Uh, the familiar white and green scheme of Alex Hagberg. A pair of them. In fact, Alex has just gone past Marcus Mobers. So Marcus will have one eye on Mark Reinhard closing in behind him. Mark Reinhard leading this one. A little bit of a bobble there. Gets away with it. He's got a fair bit of time in his pocket. Just see if he can hang this together for an entire eight-minute run. Looking pretty decent. He's starting to look a little bit scruffy. A few bobbles. Slightly sideways off the end of the main straight. Remember, these are six-and-a-half-turn powered cars rather than the 13-and-a-half-turn of the spec class. Gap between the front three, uh, Mark Reinhard now the uh, predicting for a 47 lap run, as is Alex Hagberg and Ollie Payne also in the mix with that as well. About two tenths of a second currently between Mark Reinhard, who we are running with, and Ollie Payne. Uh, just seen actually, Ollie has let, who was that? That was Michael Orlowski. So Ollie's let a recovering Michael Olnowski back through to see if he can get a tow round. Still running with Mark Reinhard on stream at the moment. A little bit tight off the end of the main straight for Mark Reinhard. Just waiting for the timing to update. As they cross the line one more time. Payne from Orlowski from Reinhard currently. Let's have a look. Reinhard back to the top. Reinhard currently a couple of seconds in front. Heading for a 47 lap run still. That might drop off to a 46. Looking at the rate it is dropping off, but uh, starting to come together for Mark. Chicken wing starting to come in attendance. His arm is lifting on the rostrum. Heading round towards the car of Rosario Gaiamo. Catch and pass him for a lap. Not caught Alex Hagberg yet. Seems to have spent the entire run in his wheel tracks. Mark successfully navigates Rosario Gamo. Still flowing nicely through the middle of the circuit. Car looking pretty smooth still, just over one minute left. Looking for timing to update. Remember, Mark started out quite late in this run. Mark now showing he is predicting 47.8.10. Just looking for the overall time, waiting for the updates. Michael Orlowski now looks like he's got himself to the front, has he? No, Mark Reinhardt back to the top. Still 8.10.407. Going a little bit haywire because of where they started. We've got 20 seconds left. Mark Reinhardt still running for the line. Doing what he can. Car still looks pretty hooked up, turning in nicely off the end of the main straight. This would be some kind of comeback if Mark can uh, start moving himself up the order. Comes through, crosses the line. Let's see, has Mark Reinhardt taken that? Mark Reinhardt makes the extra lap as well. So uh, one extra lap for Mark Reinhard onto the 47th lap. There you go. You saw the chicken wing in attendance on the rostrum. So uh, that's a 47-lap run there for Mark Reinhard. Um, at, the, uh, at the end of that one, gets congratulations from Ollie Payne 
Uh, Michael Olowski, there we go. Fist pump with Marcus Mobers. Jan Rathaiski congratulates him, uh, as does uh, Alessio Mazzio. So, uh, Mark, uh, well respected and manages to do the quickest time. Now, we said we'd uh, bring you up to speed with what happened in uh, spec. Uh, Ollie Payne took uh, spec, basically, from Jan Rathaiski. Um, with Simon Lauter, a little bit of a mistake from Simon, uh, put the car on its roof. Uh, so Ollie took it. Uh, his time, though, was some four seconds slower than earlier on. So we've now got Simon with two round wins and the quickest time still. Um, Ollie has got two round wins. Uh, Ollie's got second in rounds as well. Uh, so when Simon's won, Ollie's finished second. Uh, Simon has been finishing at third when Ollie has been winning the round. So uh, it's a little bit of a um, mix-up going on. Both of them have got better. Um, they, they've both got different things in terms of a tie break. Ollie's got better drop scores uh, currently. And uh, Simon has got uh, quicker times. So we'll try and catch Mark Reinhard after... This one, to uh, if we can get uh, get him over for a little bit of a chat whilst he's out there marshalling, or once he's done marshalling. Heat number one of round number four of spec coming now. So Calarese leads off. Rene Tra says, good job, Mark. Yep, that was a fantastic job from Mark. Let's just have a look, see what it's done to the overall ranking list for Modified. Uh, okay, so Mark has... Uh, I think that's not updated yet. Okay, just waiting for an update on that. So Mark's going to come over and have a chat with us uh, after uh, after this run. Uh, just having a look, see if we can get an update about what it's done to the overall positions. There we go. There's a, an update. So uh, Michael Orlowski still looking good in modified with uh, two zeros. Uh, and a third, Ollie Payne with zero and two twos. Alex Hagberg in there currently. Jan Rathaiski, Mark Reinhard currently sitting in fifth position with a uh, zero, a six, and an eight. So uh, he'll be looking to bump himself up the field a little bit, possibly later on. Out in front of this one, we've got Mario Neri. Let's see if we can spot him. Mario is, the, I believe, the orange-coloured car with yellow wheels. Down the end of the main straight. There we go. This is uh, Mario Neri leading this one. Slightly reduced numbers. Uh, Alessandro Calarese running second. Gianluca Lino running in third position. Freddie Parker running in fourth. So just wanting to make his way past the traffic nice and gently is Mario. Mario Neri out onto the main straight. Makes a small mistake off the end of the main straight. See if that drops him down the field a little bit. Yeah, has done. It's promoted Alessandro Calarese with the number four car to the front. Let's see if we can uh, spot the four car out there somewhere. He is, he's on the main straight now, I believe. That is the, uh, well, sort of multicolored, really. There we go. That's the number four car on screen. Bounces the car over the curbs, down the main straight, across the, looks like, rumble strip. Certainly keep some of the drivers awake at night. Down the main straight once more. Just trying to get the turning point off the end of the main straight nailed. So 
works it through down the chicane, series of chicanes under the driver's roster and round the carousel through the fast right left chicane. Out onto the main straight once more. Our lead car, then, car number four of Alessandro Calarese. Heading for a 40 lap run. Uh, two drivers down for 40 lap runs at the moment. Alessandro Calarese down for a 40 in 8.04. Uh, Gianluca Lino heading for, in fact, he's dropped off to a 39 in 8.05. Freddie Parker has got himself up into third position in the heat. Let's see if we can pick up Freddie out there. He is a yellow, uh, white and yellow colored car. So he's just about to head out on to the main straight now. There we go. This is Freddie Parker running in third position. So just trying to carve his way through some traffic. You can see his uh, brother, Lewis Parker, stood at the side of the track. So a uh, bit of an oh, mistake there from Freddie. Ends up uh, sliding across, getting caught and tangled with many, many cars. But back on his wheels, back circulating again. He just popped up into second place as well um, in the heat after a bit of an issue for Mario Neri. That's put uh, Gianluca Lino back into second position. Let's see if we can find him with the number three car. Where's Gianluca Lino? That's the seven car, the one car. Three car is by process of elimination. One of the white cars. There we go. We've got him on screen now. Gianluca Lino. Uh, all kinds of wrong coming out onto the main straight. Just holding it together through the middle of the circuit. Off down the main straight once more. Gianluca Lino running in second position in this one. He is uh, about four seconds off the back of Alessandro Calarese. None of them now heading for a 40 lap run like they were earlier, getting to the last two minutes. Pace just dropping out of the cars very slightly. What are we doing in terms of lap times? Um, they're lapping uh, Gianluca Lino, who we're running with, did a 12.6 last time round. His fastest lap, an 11.8. So missing uh, about eight tenths compared to his best lap. One minute 40 left to go. Alessandro Calarese still leading this one. Last lap time was pretty slow, though. That was a 12.9 compared to a 12.2 for the car we're running with. So Gianluca Lino, he looks like he might well pop out in... Second or third position overall. Currently running in at third position. Just going to try and jump up in front of Calarese. In fact, he's now hit the front. So this is the lead car we're now running with. Though makes a little bit of an error in the middle of the circuit. I think that's a, a different white car that we've managed to pick up, is it? Let's just double check. Let's see if we can find the four car of Calarese again. With 30 seconds left to go. So they're down the main straight now. This the lead battle. The four car is the lead one of those cars. Just gets turned round. Backs out of it and gets uh, completely wrong, completely wrong footed. 
So that's going to be a slow split lap for him. And I think that might actually give Freddie Parker the win overall. That little bit of coming together. So uh, Freddie Parker takes that right at the end. So uh, that's Freddie's car buried nose deep into, uh, into another car. I think we're just going to get Mark over so that we can have a chat with him uh, about his modified result. Uh, he's just been caught by Morgan, but uh, just having a, a quick chat, quick debrief with Morgan Williams. But we'll uh, grab Mark over here for a chat any second now. Okay, with Mark Reinhard. Uh, Mark, wh where did that come from? <laughs> Good question. It actually feels the same as last year in England. Uh, for some reason, my car didn't work in the beginning, so uh, we didn't know what to do. And now it was the same thing again. I saw something on the car which didn't look right, but we couldn't find the mistake. So I just said, come on, who cares? Just use a second car, which makes prepared as well before the event. So it's like, there's the only chance we have. I need a car which is at least drivable because before I couldn't drive at all. It was just like on power left, right, it went everywhere in the wall. It was just like a, a dangerous car on the track for all the others. So, yeah, we didn't use the car before. We just put it on the track and uh, it took me a while to get used to it in the beginning. But uh, then I could see I could get more into my rhythm and push it a bit harder. Uh, yeah, and I'm happy that we at least found the problem, like changing the car to get it better now. OK, so do you think you can sort of push forward from there? Do you think you can get yourself in the mix for the, the title? Uh, yeah, let's say the race starts from now on for me. Um, I have a TQU of 6 and 8 or something, so at least I'm in the main. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm, I'm confident now. I know the car works, it was not slow at all, so um, I just try to push a little bit more and uh, see where the limit is on the car. Uh, we didn't adjust any setups on the car, so I just maybe I just keep it the same because the track is pretty bumpy, so we have no idea what to do. It's just like kind of keeping the car on the track, trying to get the bumps right and uh, yeah, don't crash. Nice feeling to get the extra lap as well at the end? Uh, yeah, definitely. But I think they also did it yesterday. Oh? I don't know if they did uh, an extra lap already. I don't know. I'm not sure. I think that, yeah, I think they might have just yeah. snuck across, but uh, still good to have that extra pace in your pocket. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But now, yeah, now we're going to check the car again, check everything's right, and uh, try to make it better. And hopefully, we can fight again for the top three spots. Okay, well, good luck. Hope we speak to you again later. Thank you. Mark Reinhardt there then uh, with a bit of a debrief after a bit of a save coming on. Back with the track action, what have we got? We have got heat number two running at the moment. Uh, Tim Panster's. Leading this one away from the start. Let's uh, see if we can find Tim. Tim is, I believe that's the car we have in shot. The sort of minty, spear minty green colored car with uh, yellow tires. It is uh, Tim Panster's leading this one from Alex Siter. Alex with the five car out there. Closing in on the back of Mark Payne is Tim Panster's. So they come out onto the main straight once more. So uh, Mark driving quite a wide car there in front of Tim Panster's. Tim uh, looking a little bit frustrated, trying to find his way past. Mark just doing his own thing, doing his own run. Trying to edge away. Tim's made a small mistake but driven back up to him. So uh, Mark Payne seeds and gets out of the way of Tim Panster's. So now starting to hit traffic for Tim. He'll just want a nice clean run through this. Hope they spot him. It's the two car that he's following of Tom Adams. Doesn't quite negotiate him. There's another green and white car in front of him. Gets balked again. So it's not really fallen very well for Tim Panster's. 
uh, that bit of traffic in front of him. I think that's actually put Alex Saiter to the front with the number five car. It has by about half a second. Let's see if we can find the five car out there. He is one of the three white and green car that's just been punted backwards into the scenery by another white and green car. So he's uh, currently prone against the barrier in the middle of the circuit at the moment. That's going to put uh, Andy Thompson somewhere near the front. Let's see if we can find Andy Thompson. His car should be easier to spot. It is a yellow front, white center, like burgundy rear. Andy Thompson currently running in second position at the moment to Tim Panster's. Let's run with him for a little bit. Down the main straight, oscillating over the bumps. Andy looks a little bit hesitant to crank the car in off the end of the main straight. Just wanting to build together, good run. Looks like coming out onto the straight, he's holding uh, a very tight line. Scrubbing off a little bit of speed maybe. Tim Panster's right behind him on circuit. Uh, Mark Payne be called in for a stop-go penalty by the looks of things. I think that might have been for the uh, slight coming together earlier with Tim Janssen. We're running with Andy Thompson at the moment. He's just uh, got a nice clear track in front of him. He's got a marauding Mark Payne behind him who is uh, driving slightly um, angry and embittered by the looks of things. Mark's car looking quite tense, quite angry. But, uh, Andy now closing in on a recovering, uh, just trying to see whose car that is directly in front of him. That's the two car of Tom Adams. So that's the third place man, and he doing well then to drive up towards the back of him. And he's car looking pretty decent. He's starting to get a bit of a handle on how the car runs, rides the bumps off the end of the main straight, looking smoother. Car's looking noticeably less sideways, a lot less... Uh, a lot fewer issues for the drivers. They're starting to get a handle on what they need to do to stop pitching the car in and get a more consistent car over an eight minute run. Catching traffic again. What have we got? One and a half minutes left. Catching uh, one of the green and white cars. There's a, a few green and white cars in this heat, which is odd because it's a bit of a strange colour to paint your car, really. Sort of. It's uh, quite odd that all three of them have ended up together. Let's move back to Tim Panster's with the six car. He is the minty green car with the yellow wheels. Last of the cars on the main straight now. So less than a minute to go for Tim. He is over a lap up on Andy Thompson. I saw the times were pretty close and then I looked at the number before them. Just heading in towards the angry looking car of Mark Payne now. And uh, it'll be even angrier after that one. 
with a launch over the barriers just in front of the car we're following with 10 seconds to go. Tim Panster's Andy Thompson looking like he's going to run in second position. Tim Panster's taking that one then from Andy Thompson. Just over a lap down the road. Tim Panster's from Andy Thompson, Tim Janssen, Tom Adams. Coming up next then, we've got uh, Christian Gear, Lucas Larson, Werner Spanbruckner, Lucas Niederer, Jan Dietmar, Dan Bancroft. Ole Thomas Bryn, Jody Sherratt and Nigel Bowen. Welcome to you if you are just joining us. Uh, we're building towards the sharp end of qualifying round number five. This is heat three of five. You're joining us here on RCTV from the Paradise RC Arena in Messina. Uh, it's the northeast coast of Sicily. Thank you to our event sponsors, Tony Sport, Schumacher, Lens, Zen Racing, RCXX Shop, Montec and Hobby Wing for helping us to bring you this coverage. Christian Gear going to lead this one away. Christian, uh, quite a distinctive colour scheme on his body shell. It's like a uh, white, yellow and sky blue coloured car. We'll run with him at the start. Uh, and Werner Spanbruckner has been uh, pushing him quite hard. Uh, Lucas Larson having done a fairly fast time, uh, but not quite as quick as Werner. And in fact, Lucas Larson just fires it off of the barrier um, in front of us. Mark Payne does a Mexican hat dance around the prone car on the track. Gets it successfully marshaled out the way. Christian Gear then heading already towards the car that started off second to him, this uh, Lucas Larson. So two seconds between the front two at the start, Christian Gear and Werner Spanbruckner. Werner looks like he's possibly got that gap under two seconds now. And indeed he has, so Werner is leading this one. Werner is the yellow front white rear car off the end of the main straight. Let's just move back one car, there we go, that is Werner. Werner running in front of Christian Gear on the split. They so started out two seconds apart, Werner is less than two seconds behind Christian at the moment. That's why we're saying he's in front. There's about the length of the main straight between them. So you see Christian move to the top and then Werner. And in fact, there's absolutely nothing in it. There is one one hundredth of a second in between the two of them that time round. Christian got nice clear track in front of him. Werner's got lovely clear track in front of him. I think Christian has actually pulled away very slightly on that lap, and he has. So Christian leading by about six tenths of a second now. He's managed to drop the hammer, now he's clear of traffic. Down the main straight for Werner Spanbruckner. Comment from Ben Clark, not being biased, but the cameraman is great. 
coincidentally, the cameraman or might also be called Ben Clark as well. Uh, we've got a, a doppelganger out there, obviously. That's funny because, you know, he's clearly wrong. I'm the best cameraman. <laughs> You're both better camera, camera <laughs> twiddlers than I am. Werner Spanbruckner leading this one. I believe he's now Austrian properly instead of Australian. Uh, I didn't. I didn't check, but I, I did correct the timing um, that he, did uh, pop up in the comments yesterday and, and he, earlier he today. He's showing his AUT rather than the AUS. Yeah. So, um, oh, okay. Good. I mean, it, it's. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's technically possible. I mean, it's a. Uh, yeah. We, we have had people from outside of Europe. Entering, um, yeah, Callan Gunn is the uh, most uh, popular one um, because uh, he comes to the large scale off road. Ben yeah. actually met him <laughs> in Czech Republic last year. Uh, yeah, I doubt he's listening, but hi, hi, Callan, if you're if you are, uh, hope uh, recovery is going well, and I uh, hope we see you later in the year. Uh, Christian Gears got himself back out in front of this one with. Uh, Four minutes remaining. Dan Bancroft's managed to camouflage himself against the uh, his plain white body shell against the Paradise RC Arena backdrop as he landed on it. As uh, cars starting to fire themselves off the track. Let's see if we can pick up the lead car of Christian Gear. He is the white front yellow center sky blue rear we've got him again on screen it's an he's adequate job Ben uh, it is <laughs> caught him up nicely he's starting to recognize like yeah you you, you you tend to uh, get there so the, uh, and you get you tend to know the the top uh, color schemes of the of the main guy, main protagonists in each in each of the qualifying heats and then they all get jumbled around in the in the finals. <laughs> in the finals, just to, just to screw with you a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, um, we've, we've seen quite a few uh, plain coloured body shells that have turned into uh, race paint as the weekend has gone on. Yeah, Reinhard uh, was using pink and then he used his race scheme and then he's back to pink. Uh, well, he just used his race paint then in that one. Uh, Did he? Okay. He, he used his race paint there. and that I, was, was actually I was slightly distracted by uh, you know, recovering... Uh, that, that was actually a, a, a fresh car that he um, that yeah. he, he put down. There was uh, some unidentified gremlin, <laughs> uh, so um, put down a, a car that uh, Max Mackler had built for him. Is it possibly your car? Uh, no, that's <laughs> not my car. My, my, my car's being uh, driven by another Mark. My car's <laughs> being driven by Mark Styles, the car that uh, the car that I built as a sort of emergency uh, emergency spare. Yeah. So uh, Mark was struggling uh, a bit yesterday, but he's just done a, a fifth in round. So um, he's starting to get there. He'll uh, sort of try and nail himself into the into the A final and um, potentially not drive us off off the cliff on the way back <laughs> to uh, to the hotel or uh, or into Mount Etna. That was uh, a distinct possibility yesterday. I think uh, it wasn't going that well for him. But uh, Christian Gear, it's going pretty well for him. Uh, leading out in front. Just out onto the main straight. That's a wide line there onto the, uh, onto the main straight. I think it's one of those things, if you've made a mistake, you kind of just want to, uh, well, you kind of just have to, to live with it. You're not going to get that time back. So you just uh, accept the running slightly wide uh, and do what you can to lose as least time as you possibly can. Christian Gear now uh, a fair chunk ahead of Werner Spanbruckner. Although, in fact, that's coming down. Forecast time is... Only just over a second difference between them. With one minute left to go. So Christian needs to kind of keep this one circulating. Could do with catching and passing that traffic in front of him. Werner isn't going to get to them with 40 seconds remaining. Of course, they're obliged to get out of the way. And 
that's going to cost him a little bit. So that one second advantage that he's got is going to be eaten up slightly. This could condense a little bit at the end with Werner Spanbruckner. What was he, eight tenths back that time round? It's now just over six tenths as they enter the last lap. It's not that comfortable for Christian Gear. Closer than he'd like it. Ooh, ooh, that wasn't a very clean end of the lap. Let's just see what Werner does as he crosses the line. Does Werner just take that at the end? No, Werner doesn't get that in the end. Werner misses out by, uh, it was like 1.1 seconds at the end. Werner is the big chap there. So, uh, ooh, Jody having uh, a bit of a, a chat there on the rostrum. Jody having uh, a bit of a, a heated conversation with Javier. So uh, Jody picking up his car there and uh, stalking off. Not sure what happened there, to be honest. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. I didn't see far enough. I, I, yeah, I couldn't hear exactly what was going on, but uh, something uh, displeasing Jody. He's not had the uh, smoothest weekend, has Jody? Here we go. Got some guys looking to cement places in the A final in this one. Stefan Schultz, Michael Bolt. Marcus Andreasen, Niels de Greiser, Andreas Brin, Alexander Anderson, Stefan Hoyce, Stuart Cartwright, Mark Jordan. So just joining us here on our RCTV coverage from the 112th spec Euros in Messina in Sicily. Thank you to the event sponsors, Tony Sport, Schumacher, Lens Bodies, Zen Racing, RCXX Shop, Montec and Hobbywing for helping to bring this coverage. Stefan Schultz leading away, uh, looks like a different color body shell for Stefan. It's a sort of uh, weird kind of pinky color. But, uh, rather than his usual race paint, just trying to see if I can spot what's different about the body shell. It's a quick opening lap anyway. It looks like, uh, I'm not sure if that's a BA010 body shell. It, something looks different about it. It's a little bit difficult to tell at the moment. It's, it's a lower, flatter body shell than he was running. I think he was running an M20 before, so he's uh, it's a less aggressive body shell. Perhaps he's just looking to hang on to the pace. A little bit more understeer on his car, certainly. Um, still leading the heat, though, is Stefan. Marcus Andreas in second. Uh, in fact, Michael Bolt's got himself up into second place now. So let's see if we can move back and pick up Michael Bolt, the orange front blue rear. Michael's car definitely not looking very safe off the end of the main straight as he backs it in. So trying to deal with a car that's not, uh, not particularly compliant. He's somehow extracting a lap time out of it. Stefan Schultz leading this one by about six tenths of a second from the car that we're following of Michael Bolt. Stefan mired in traffic at the moment. Michael Bolt we're running with in second position. Started out one second behind Stefan Schultz. Stefan just circulating through traffic at the minute. Uh, in fact, Marcus Andreasen's got himself up into second position. 
He's running the eight car. Let's see if we can find him. I think he is the orange, mainly orange car with a white stripe down the centre. He's last car on the main straight now. So this is car number eight of our second place man, Marcus Andreasen. And Michael Bolt just uh, skids out of shot, lands at Jody Schechter's feet. Jody Schechter. Jody Sherrod. Jody Schechter? Jody Schechter? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They, they've, they've become interchangeable. I'm going to uh, start charging you. <laughs> <laughs> so, they, they've kind of become interchangeable over the course of the weekend. It's, it, it's an easy, yeah, yeah. It, it's an easy, uh, easy change to make. Easy mistake to make. Stefan Schultz leading then from the car that we are following at the moment of Marcus Andreasen. Just keeping an eye on where they are relative to one another on track. Stefan's got a nice clear track in front of him. Marcus is just closing in on this gaggle of cars in front of him. So it's the sixth car first of Stefan Hoist that he needs to negotiate. So he picks his way past Stefan and Stu Cartwright coming next. So I'd like to stick with him as he navigates his way through this traffic. So this really not falling nicely at all for Marcus Andreasen. Uh, Michael Bolt charging hard from that mistake, trying to join himself into that group. So, uh, oh, that worked quite nicely actually for um, I think that was Andreas Brin made a, a bit of a mistake there in front of Marcus Andreasen. So Stu Cartwright now. We're looking to get past. Stu jumps out of the way very nicely. Stefan Schultz, meanwhile, has used that to his advantage and pulled out some three seconds down the road. Marcus Andreasen in second position. Let's see if we can pick up Stefan Schultz again, our leader. He's just coming onto the main straight now. Passes the uh, the prone car of Michael Bolt. Michael Bolt on his roof again. So uh, not coming together for Michael particularly well this run. He's promoted Stu Cartwright up into third position. Running with Stefan Schultz at the moment. He's already had a couple of fifth places in round. So he'll be looking to cement his place in the A final. So Schultz from Andreasen from Cartwright. Good run coming together for Stu. Two minutes left. Everybody just going to be trying to keep it calm. You've already got this far into the run. Don't want to throw it off at this point. Run's already gone to pieces for some drivers. Closing in on Mark Jordan was the leader there of Stefan Schultz. Caught past him quite nicely. So we're running with Stefan Schultz at the moment as he closes in on the rear of Stu Cartwright. A little bit of uh, unintended flying over some of the curbs in the chicane. Stefan closes in on the back of Stu, carries a lot of speed through the chicane there. Got a relatively slow car of Niels de Greiser in front of the pair of them. So Stefan trying to find his way past Stu Cartwright into the last minute. 
Stu on a good run himself, currently in fourth position in the heat, but gets out of the way, seeds position to Stefan. We'll try and pick up a toe now. Stefan pushing to get himself up and in front of Nils de Greiser. 30 seconds left. It's not fallen that well for Stefan right at the end of this one. We'll see what we can do. What do we got? 20 seconds left to go. Stefan Schultz leading from... Marcus Andreasen leading from Stuart Cartwright. Michael Boltz just popped himself back up there in third position. Stu Cartwright back to third position. Mark Jordan ends up on his roof. Right at the death. So Stu Cartwright does make the extra lap as well onto the 42nd lap there. Stefan Schultz gets that then from Marcus Andreasen and Stu Cartwright in third position. They just head down off the driver's rostrum. Stefan Schultz going to be happy with that one. A quick 43 lap run. Top heat of spec getting set to go. Welcome to you if you are just joining us here on RCTV. Bringing you this coverage of the EFRA 112 Euros for 2024. In conjunction with our event sponsors, Tony Sport, Schumacher, Lens Bodies, Zen Racing, RCXX Shop, Montec and Hobby Wing. Drivers finding their way out on the circuit. So we have Ollie Payne with two round wins, Simon Lauter with two round wins, Simon with the quickest time so far. Guys looking to lock themselves into the A final. Ollie Payne looking quick at the start. Simon Lauter looking quicker towards the end of the run. Ollie Payne leads off from Simon Lauter. These two looking a step ahead of the rest of the field. Over the course of this weekend. See if Simon can run with Ollie. So uh, if one of them takes this round, they are locked in for the front row. Two round wins each. So they would be then the only drivers that could deny the other TQ. Ollie Payne into an early lead from Simon Lauter. Let's have a look at the gap between them. Some six tenths of a second at the moment to the good for Ollie. We saw this earlier though. We had uh, Ollie had about 1.8 seconds in his pocket, uh, and Simon then just started to chip away at it. So Ollie just needs to hang on the pace. Ollie heading towards Finley Whitelock, who collects the barrier in the middle of the track, parks it in the middle of the track, stays nicely out of. Simon Lauter's way as well. Ollie now heading towards his teammate and good friend Morgan Williams. So Ollie successfully negotiates Morgan. Ollie from Simon, from Jan Rothyski, Lewis Parker running in fourth position. Max Mackler's popped himself up into fourth. 
That was a uh, bit of a, a mistake there for Mark Styles, and we got, uh, I think Ollie got caught up in that. That's going to let Simon close in a little bit on him. Retirement for Max Mackler, or was that just a, a body tuck? So let's move our focus back and pick up Simon. He's circulating behind Mark Style, so he's the last of the cars just on the main straight now. Let's see if Simon can do anything about chasing down Ollie Payne. They started out one second apart. Mark gets out of Simon's way. Got Morgan coming up next. Morgan very nicely gets out of Simon's way. So now no cars between them. We'll see what the gap is this time round. It's uh, Ollie currently heading for a new, in fact, Ollie predicting a 45 lap run currently. So starting to find a bit more pace in the circuit. None who, no one's managed a 45 lap run here. Okay, let's pick up the car of Simon Lauter. He's just coming past race control now. He's the number two car. There we go. And small mistake there from Simon actually. Drops him back behind Max Mackler who jumps on the brake so as not to impede his run. Uh, I think then that's going to put uh, Ollie in a uh, pretty messy, uh, pretty good position, sorry. Um, that small mistake from Simon. Let's pick up Ollie, the number one car. He's just under the driver's rostrum now, through the carousel. Looking pretty good for Ollie. If he can take this, then that's uh, going to be three round wins. Guarantee himself a spot on the front row. And if he can do a new faster time, what's he got? A 44.803. Let's just have a look and see what Simon's time was earlier. Simon's best time was a 44 in 803.8. .8. Uh, so probably at this stage, actually, Simon is looking to... Maintain his hold on the fastest time. This could uh, end up being very, very close. We're still with Ollie Payne. Predicted time 44.803.6, but with three minutes left, I think that pace is going to drop off slightly. So essentially, it would come down to a last round shootout then between Ollie and Simon Lauter. Uh, if Ollie continues with this, Ollie would be guaranteed first or second on the grid. He would have the three zero scores in the bag. So no one could beat that score. The only person that would be able to match it would be Simon Lauter. But Simon would need to win the last round. Uh, and then Simon has this faster time in his pocket because Ollie's time now a predicted a 44.804. So has dropped off. The pace seemingly having gone out of the track compared to earlier on. Still with Ollie Payne as he catches the battling Lewis Parker and Christian Donath. And Lewis sees the danger coming. Dives out the way. Finley Whitelock gets out of the way of everybody. So it's just Christian Donath now in front of Ollie Payne. Christian gets out of his way onto the main straight. Ollie Payne now heading up towards the rear of Mark Stiles once more. Mark currently running in sixth position in this heat. He's looking to lock himself into the final. He could do with dropping his sort of 12th place from one of his rounds. Put in three sort of comfortable top tens. So Mark in front of Ollie at the moment. 
needing him to open up. Ollie not quite close enough. See if it comes out. Oh, spin there, half spin from Ollie. Behind Mark, that drops him back behind Lewis. What's that done in terms of Simon? That's definitely going to drop Ollie off the pace in terms of a quick run. How close is that going to let Simon get? Simon's pace improving. That was a 12-4 last time round from Ollie and 11-0 from Simon. Ollie back on it now. Let's just have a look. Still three seconds between them. So Ollie kind of getting away with that. Lewis Parker gets out of his way again. So 20 seconds left. I don't think Ollie's going to catch Christian Donath. Max Mackler on his roof again. Gets recovered to the tail of that field. 15 seconds left. You can just see in front of Ollie, Christian Donath, and Mark Styles down the main straight once more. Mark crosses the line, remembers to carry on. And actually finish. So Ollie Payne taking that round from Simon Lauter. Ollie Payne taking that from Simon Lauter. So Ollie is definitely on the front row. Ollie has now three round wins, um, three zeros. He will be second at worst. So uh, Ollie having a bit of a, a discussion with uh, Mark as they come off the rostrum. A, uh, a bit of a, what was that, I think. Um, Mark uh, probably balked him very slightly. So there we go, three round wins for Ollie. Uh, where are we looking at overall in round scores? Who have we got? Uh, Morgan Williams currently unlucky BQ at the minute. Finley Whitelock also with a couple of good scores, but needs needs one more to try and bump himself up there. There's going to be there's going to be some quick guys missing out at the front of the B final. You can see uh, just out the corner of my eye uh, some gesticulation going on from Ollie. Uh, he's uh, clearly not happy. LC Racing class just going out, so we'll uh, lock the camera off. And uh, we'll be back for the modified heat. So, uh, so back in around 10 minutes. Thank you. 
positioning after two minutes. Car four position one. Car seven position two. Car eight position three. Car one position four. Car five position five. Car six position six. Marcia, Marcia, number six, one minute to drive. Marcia, number six, one minute. Michael, you're going in. Marcia, car four, position two. Car five, position three. Car one, position four. Car eight, position five. Car six, position six. Car three, position seven. Stop one. Stop four. Stop eight. Stop six. Stop seven. Okay, you want to enter? You want to enter? Put on the mask and the mask. One minute to start. Start order check a scan one. DC4 Sinatra. Nazari Alessia. Smiley Morris. Nazari Marco. Mastolino Vita. Tony's Carmelo. Have a left. Roger Antonio. Forza di voti fa del giro e allineatevi sul rettilineo.
Just going to catch up with uh, Ollie Payne then. Ollie, uh, well done. You took that fifth round of qualifying. Yes, yeah. Uh, much better that round. It seems to get better every run. It's just it's all a consistency thing. Car always starts well. It's just trying to make it last eight minutes. Just so you had a little bit of difficulty with traffic coming past yeah. Mark there. Yeah, a little bit of difficulty, but I had a big enough gap that it wasn't a problem. But I was stressing a little bit because every other run I've been, you know, quite far ahead, and then I've lost it in the last sort of minute or so. So I wasn't too sure if I was going to be okay or not, but it seemed to be better that run. Well, I think Simon made a mistake as well behind you, which dropped you off. But uh, what's the pace like in the track? Because now you've got three round wins, so you're definitely on the front row. Simon's the only person that can deny you. But it looks like the time that he did earlier, it doesn't look like that's coming, you know, by halfway through the run, you're already off that pace. Yeah, I think it's, it's going to be tough to beat that because the track now, it seems easy to do like a fast lap time. But it, it doesn't, it's changing a lot throughout the run. So I think it's going to be tough to beat that time. I think I would have been maybe close without any mistakes, but to, to beat it, it's, I think, yeah, too late now, I think, maybe. Okay, so basically you just effectively focused on Simon for that last run. If you're in front of him, well, then you're, you're on pole. Whatever happens is beat him and then it's on pole. I don't think, I'm, I'm not too focused on time or anything like that. It's just the main focus is to beat him. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, obviously that was pretty good. And uh, mod's going okay for you as well? Yeah, yeah, it seems to be getting better every run. We had a, I was quite surprised. I didn't expect Mark to be where he was at last run um, because of the splits and the way everything was being called I thought I was in the lead and when I looked up at the board at seven minutes I was sort of leading so I was like okay and uh, but it was before he crossed the loop so I didn't see him so I kind of you know didn't think about him so much which was a bit of a mistake but yeah try and just race it a bit harder the next one okay well uh, good luck obviously you're on the front row for stock regardless and uh, it's a good shout with pole position you've got the three zeros so uh, you can only be matched now with that yeah. so um, yeah hopefully it continues to go well for you and we'll be chatting with you later on cool thank you okay there we go then Ollie Payne our Front row man, definitely. Uh, he's taken three round wins in stock.
Stop two. Stop three. Stop six. Stop five. Stop seven. Okay. Maga polo uskomino. Polo uskomino. Okay, so we're back then for the run home in uh, Modified. We've got uh, three heats of mod coming up. Just going to um, keep the camera locked off for a little bit longer. We'll be back up there in time for the top heat, but uh, we'll keep you up to speed with what is going on out on the circuit. Uh, and matching up with the timing. Welcome to you if you are just joining us here as we uh, sort of run towards the end of Saturday here at the EFRA 112 Euros for 2024 from Messina on the northeast coast of Sicily. Obviously, thank you to our event sponsors, Tony Sport, Schumacher, Lens Bodies, Zen Racing, RCXX Shop, Montec and Hobbywing for helping us to bring you this coverage. Guys from the first heat of the modified class getting set to get out on the track. Uh, had a bit of a, a catch up with Ollie Payne just then on the stream. Uh, Ollie locking himself into the front row. He's taken three round wins. Uh, Simon Lauter has taken the other two round wins. Simon's got the quick time uh, at the moment. So as Ollie was saying, uh, it's all going to be down to this uh, last run, really. Ollie just needs to beat Simon uh, in order to seal the TQ. He's definitely on the front row. No one can beat his 0, zero, zero. Uh, Can only be matched by Simon Lauter. Modified going out on the track. What have we seen in Modified? We've seen Michael Olowski taking a couple of rounds, uh, Ollie Payne having taken a round, and Mark Reinhard uh, giving, uh, as Ollie just described there, a um, little bit of a fright from the uh, back of the field because Mark started out quite low down uh, and, yeah, managed to, to make his way forward, uh, pumping a, a decent time. Um, he hasn't got the fastest time. Michael Olowski's got the fastest time with a uh, something like three-tenths of a second faster. Uh, modified cars uh, released out onto the track. Lucas Larson has led away. We'll just get in the camera uh, in position. So you'll see the camera lift up in a moment. But uh, this is the first heat of stock. Nicola Moroni's got himself to the front of the field at the minute. Nicola, the all-white car. Let's see if we can pick him up. There's two all-white cars out there. Nicola will be the one with the white wheels. He's just off the end of the main straight now. This uh, Nicola Moroni, Mr. Hot Race, Mr. Lens Bodies. Mark Chinnery joining in on the stream, saying uh, great coverage, thanks. It's uh, our pleasure, Mark. We always enjoy bringing you this coverage. Some great events being hosted by EFRA. And we've got a, a long summer of various different EFRA championships being streamed live on RCTV. Nicola Moroni we're running with. Lucas Larson is leading. Let's see if we can find Lucas Larson. He is the two car. I think that's the all blue colored car. Uh, there's two of them, but he's the second of the ones on the main straight now. That is the two car of Lucas Larson. Let's run with him for a little bit. He's actually uh, 
running in second position now to Nicola Moroni. Nicola just behind him on shot, actually. Nicola getting very, very close. Wanting uh, a bit of a, a look, closer look at Lucas Larson. Mario Neri running in third position in this heat. Going to build towards the top heat coming out uh, in two heats time. This is the first of three. And just seeing actually, uh, Nicola Moroni, he's off at the side of the track with Alex Hagberg kneeling down next to him with a, uh, a driver in hand. Let's just see if we can pick that up as we come past. There we go, there's uh, Alex feverishly working away on Nicola's car. Uh, twiddling a driver in the middle of the car. Yeah, I wonder what he was doing there. He's making some sort of change to the car. We're back with the lead car of Lucas Larson. Heads off down the main straight. So Nicola providing a little bit of a service for Alex. And uh, now that Nicola's got some decent round scores in, uh, Alex will be looking to... He was looking fairly good for a podium um, earlier on, but uh, he'll be a little bit worried by what Mark Reinhardt managed uh, last time around and managing to uh, move himself forward, uh, running a fresh car that Max Mackler had prepared for him. Uh, Mark, just uh, something not quite right, uh, feeling uh, never quite feeling uh, in the car. Uh, never quite feeling hooked up, so managed to uh, or change to uh, fresh chassis. And all of a sudden came alive, started getting some feeling in the car. And going quite well, so uh, thinks he's got something he can fight with now. As he said, his, uh, his meeting starts now. Lucas Larson, halfway through the run, leading this one. Alessandro Bianchi running in second with the four car. Let's see if we can spot the four car out there. I think he might be the other uh, sort of minty green colored car. Let me just double check. It is. So Lucas, uh, sorry, uh, Bianchi is two cars in front. There we go. That is the car that we're looking at. So car skipping, hopping around as he comes out onto the main straight. About to be caught by the leader, Lucas Larson. Alessandro Bianchi, this car that we're running with down the main straight, look, hopping, ducking, weaving, diving all over the place. Car trying to navigate, negotiate all of those bumps. Really ripply down there over the washboard section. And hops down the main straight once more. Tail end of the car flicked up. Trying to pop a wheelie there uh, was the that was the car in front of Lucas Larson with two minutes left to go. The, uh, any of you wondering why Stu Cartwright's name is on the screen but he's not running? He decided to give uh, modified a miss and withdraw from the class after uh, after yesterday. Going fairly well in stock and felt that. Uh, two cars was uh, a bit of a, a, a challenge too far for him. So uh, really looking loose now off the end of the main straight for Alessandro Bianchi. Marco Maguni has got himself up into second with the five car. But uh, what have we got? One minute 20 left. Let's pick up the leader, the blue colored car with the black wheels on the main straight now. Let's just... Uh, See him, he's under the driver's rostrum. This is Lucas Larson. 
for the final minute. Again, not very clean off the end of the main straight. Car just hopping about. Gets it back on his wheels. Does what he can do. Forty five seconds left. Catching traffic that's weaving, ducking, diving, trying to find your way through that, as well as hanging on to a slightly wayward car yourself. Lucas Larson expertly managing it, predicting a time of a 43 lap run in 809. So should just make it through for the 43 lap run. No one else heading for it. 42.806 for Marco McCuny is predicted. So last couple of seconds might be relatively tight on time. There we go. 43.809 pretty much as predicted. So that was uh, modified qualifying round five, heat number one. That is done, that is complete. So penultimate heat coming up of modified. Got a few uh, quick guys that are currently in the top 10 uh, in this one. So primary amongst those will be Martin Huddy. Uh, he's currently sat in seventh overall with uh, Fourth in round, sixth in round, seventh in round. He's uh, most likely suspect to make the A final from this next heat. Thomas Liptak uh, is also just about hanging in there in 10th at the moment. And uh, Marcus Andreasen, uh, 11th currently. So in with a shot. Drivers taking part in this then. Martin Huddy, Thomas Liptak, Marcus Andreasen, Lewis Parker, Christian Donath, Alexander Anderson, Alessandro Brunelli and Rene Jan. Martin Huddy going to lead us off on this one. Just a few warm-up laps going on. Drivers get to feel what they've got underneath them especially those drivers that are running in two classes. Uh, got Marcus Andreessen running both classes. Got Lewis Parker, Christian Donath, Alexander Anderson, both running in two classes. Possibly some names you'd expect to see in the top heat and right up there competing at the sharp end. Heading out onto the main straight. Martin Huddy going to lead away. Martin is uh, an all-white car. The front of shot. So Martin Huddy leads away. Thomas Liptak right on the back of him. Straight from the start. As they cross the line. Timing line is just here on the exit of the chicane as you go past it there. Christian Donath also with a very, very hot opening lap. So just looking to settle down. Martin Huddy and Thomas Liptak, two Slovakian drivers, circulating together, working together. A mistake from Lewis Parker. And that's uh, promoted Christian Donath up into third position. That will shake out as they come across the line this time. Martin Huddy leading this one. Martin starting to settle in and edge away from Thomas Liptak at the rear of screen. Martin uh, should already be in the A final, but uh, see a little mistake behind him from Thomas Liptak. Drops him away. Christian Donath up into third position. Martin starting to head in towards traffic already. There's a uh, slightly wayward looking car of Alessandro Brunelli 
that he is catching. So he passes him quite nicely, coming out onto the straight, tucks underneath him on the exit of the chicane. Martin Huddy predicting a time currently 46.807. So a couple of laps faster predicted for Martin Huddy than uh, anybody else in the heat. 44 lap runs predicted for everyone else. Martin Huddy down the main straight. More traffic that he's closing in on. That's the three car of Rene Yarn. He'll be catching and passing soon. So all of the traffic just uh, filing out the way. So that's Rene Yarn gets out of the way. It's a nice clear track now in front of Martin Huddy. Thomas Liptak giving chase behind, but uh, gets balked very slightly. Makes his way past two, three. Thomas Liptak uh, not a million miles away. It's just over the length of the straight. Of course, the length of the straight in modified is less than the length of the straight in stock class in real-time terms because the cars are traveling faster. So still with Martin Huddy as he comes out onto the main straight once more. That is the car of uh, just trying to spot the car that he's catching and passing. Doesn't really matter. Goes past him quite easily because he was backwards. Martin Huddy still leading this one pretty comfortably. Down to a 46 lap predicted run. Thomas Liptak is up to a 45 lap run. But Martin Huddy predicting to go over a lap quicker than Thomas Liptak in second place. Martin be thinking he probably should have made the top heat, but uh, looks like he's going to lock himself in to the A final quite comfortably. With one round of qualifying remaining. Thomas Liptak running in second position. We're running with Martin Huddy, though, as he closes in on the back of Lewis Parker. Dives through on him. More traffic in front passes. Uh, car pointing backwards. The sixth car that was of Marcus Andreasen. It's a good run coming together for Martin Huddy. Traffic falling just nicely for him. He's got a decent gap now over Thomas Liptak. Thomas looking like he could run with him at the start, but uh, Martin then just starting to grind away with his pace. Keep on pumping in consistent laps. Lap after lap after lap. Woof, off the um, end of the main straight. Someone uh, backed off a little bit there and caught Lewis Parker by surprise. Martin Huddy, meanwhile, we are running with him as he cruises through the field. It's like he's driving down through downtown Beirut. Heading up to more traffic. Everybody just seemingly falling off the track in front of him. A little bit of a mistake there through the chicane off the end of the main straight. Bit of a bobble on the rear of the car. Two minutes 30 left. Then we're in for the top heat of spec. Uh, sorry, top heat of modified. Uh, before we go back to spec. More crash cars in front of Martin Huddy. He flings the car through the chicane. Thomas Liptak still running second. Christian Donath still running in third position. Martin Huddy leading now, predicting a 45 lap run. So he's dropped off of the pace of that 46. Maybe not maintaining the speed in the car for the entire run. Doing what he can, doing what he needs to. Should still give him a good round score. It's been a pretty clean run. 
Catches and passes. That was Christian Donath that he's gone past, who is current third place man. One minute 20 remaining for Martin Huddy. Closing in on Lewis Parker next. Lewis's car starting to look uh, a little bit sketchy, a little bit wayward towards the end of the run. Just see him out the front of shot. More speed carried there, and Lewis gets right out of the way of Martin Huddy. Lovely clear track in front of Martin now. That's the best feeling in the world. In fact, I think he's going to catch the car of Brunelli by the end. 45 seconds left. Just a little bit of hesitation in the chicane. Cars start to feel a little bit more lazy at this stage in the run. But uh, does pass the car of Brunelli. Uh, manages to haul it up at the end of the main straight. Martin Huddy then heading for uh, another heat win and another decent round score with 20 seconds left. Martin Huddy out onto the main straight one more time. A little bit wide through that chicane. Crosses the line with a 45 in 8.03. Martin Huddy then taking that one. Everybody comes off the driver's rostrum. Top heat of modified. Getting set. See Michael Olowski heading up onto the driver's rostrum. There we go. There's the results of that one. Martin Huddy taking that one from Thomas Liptak with Christian Donath in third position. So permutations from this one. Uh, Michael Olowski with a couple of round wins, Ollie Payne with a round win, Mark Reinhard with a round win. So Michael Olowski will be looking to seal the deal. If Michael takes this one, he will be guaranteed TQ because he will have uh, three zeros and the only drivers who would be able to get anywhere near him uh, are Mark Reinhard. Um, who could only get one more and Ollie Payne who could only get one more uh, after this one so this could be a TQ sealer for Michael Olowski Michael also having done the quickest time so far by about three tenths from Mark Reinhardt Mark though uh, having some strong pace in his car last time Michael Olowski leads away then his all-white car off down the main straight. We'll keep an eye on him. We'll keep an eye on Ollie Payne. We'll keep an eye on where Mark Reinhardt is as well in the overall timings. Remember, Mark came from quite a long way back. He still started out five seconds back. Did Mark Reinhardt, Ollie Payne with the hot opening lap. Just let everything settle down for a couple of laps. Michael Olowski being chased by Ollie Payne. These two white cars, and in fact, uh, Michael Olowski gets out of the way of Ollie Payne. If we can move back uh, a couple of cars. So we have Ollie Payne backwards off the end of the main straight. Ollie Payne leading from Orlowski from Reinhard. And 
and uh, Alessio Mazzio pitches it backwards off the end of the main straight too. So Oli now trying to chase down the car of Michael in front of him. This will bobble from Mark Reinhardt out of the back of shot. Oli Payne from Alex Hagberg. Reinhard to the front though. Let's see if we can pick up Mark's car. Mark running his race paint out there. He is just at the top end of the circuit coming out onto the main straight now. So this the lead car of Mark Reinhard. Caught and pass Rene Doctor. Jan Rathyski that he needs to catch and pass next. So car five, position one. Ollie and Michael are going to have a little bit of a shock at that. They've been pushing really hard at the front and uh, they'll be wondering exactly where Mark Reinhardt's come from. They obviously know he's got some pace in the car. But, uh, Mark, ah, Mark makes a small mistake there as he was trying to get past the car of, I think that was Marcus Mobers. That's going to drop Mark very slightly off the pace at the front of that one. Let's see if he can recover it. Ollie Payne now back to the front from Hagberg, from Jan Rathyski now in third position. Let's just see, though, where we can end up. How costly was that mistake for Mark? He is circulating behind Rene Doctor. Rene gets out of the way. Let's him go. So Mark fires off into that gap in front of him. Just seeing where the other drivers are on the circuit. Ollie Payne still leading this one then. Let's see if we can pick up Ollie's car, the white and red colored car. He is just heading out onto the main straight now. There's Ollie down the under the driver's rostrum through the carousel. Up through the chicanes at the top end of the circuit, out onto the main straight one more time. Oli Payne from Alex Hagberg, Jan Rathyski, Michael Olowski. Remember the only person that can TQ the meeting from this round would be Michael Olowski. Anybody else, it goes in to the final round of qualifying. Michael Olowski with two round wins. Oli Payne with one. Mark Reinhard with one. Oli Payne predicting a 47.806 currently. Still running with Oli Payne as he closes in on the car of Rene Doctor. Backs the car in off the end of the main straight. Flinging the car over the kerbs. Alex Hagberg running in second place. Some 1.3 seconds off of Ollie currently. Ollie already locks himself into the front row in stock. Looking to do the same potentially in... Modified? No, he wouldn't lock himself into the front row because uh, Mark Reinhard would also be able to match his score where he would be matched with Michael Olowski. But uh, worst he would be is third on the grid. Oli Payne then closing in on the car of Mark Reinhard. That'll be a nice feeling for him, knowing that Mark is a little bit out of the picture in this round. Slightly scruffy run from Mark. Mark currently running sixth place in this heat. Ollie still heading for that ma magical 47 lap run, as is Alex Hagberg at the moment. Just looking at overall times. Ollie, the only one on the 47 now. With two minutes left, let's stick with Ollie as he comes up to pass Mark Reinhard. So, can't get him out onto the main straight. Off the end of the circuit, Ollie just pushing on. 
Just trying to hang on to the rear of that car, trying to lean on it a little bit more. Mark Reinhardt opens up, lets Ollie through. Just seeing where Michael Orlowski is lurking in the background. In fact, he's dropped behind Alex Hagberg on track as well. So Payne from Hagberg, from Orlowski. Jan Rathaiski's up there, our top seed. Jan in fourth position currently. Ollie Payne out in front. We're still running with his car. One minute left to go. Ollie looking to tie Michael Orlowski with two round wins each. And leave it all to play for going into the last round of qualifying. Predicted time now, 47.809. It was a pair of 47.810s that uh, Orlowski and Reinhard did. Orlowski with a 8.10 flat and an 8.10.3 for Reinhard. Ollie currently predicting uh, an 8.09.7 with 30 seconds left. But the pace dropping off now very, very slightly. Catching traffic as they come out onto the main straight. And, oh, it just gets tagged. Oh, turn around there. Oh, that was, that was Marcus Mobers, I believe. Just turned Ollie round. That's going to drop him off the 47 lap pace. I think he'll probably have enough in his pocket to stay in front of Alex Hagberg, will he? No, Hagberg hits the front. So right at the end, Alex Hagberg takes the round. So Ollie, oh, that was oh, just as he came past Marcus Mobers. Ollie, just, oh, that was so, so unfortunate for Ollie, as you can see as he stalks down off the rostrum. Um, I'm not sure if Alex knows actually that he's, he's taken that um, right at the end. But um, yeah, that was uh, so, so unfortunate for, for Ollie uh, right at the, the death there. And, um, yeah, dejectedly puts his car into, into scrutineering. Matt Lack saying, Ollie's making some interesting shapes on the straight. Yes, Matt. Uh, I think most of the cars are making interesting shapes on the straight. And uh, Andy Murray having a, a bit of a discussion with Marcus Mobers there. A, uh, sort of wondering quite what was going on. Uh, Marcus got a uh, little bit crossed up in the chicane and Ollie couldn't do an awful lot. It's getting a little bit fraught at this point. Towards the uh, tail end of that. So uh, just having a bit of uh, VAR going on. Right at the end of that. So in to heat number six of, oh sorry, qualifying round number six, final round of qualifying. Mario Neri leading this one away then. It's the four car. Let's have a look to see if we can find him of Alessandro Calarese. Alessandro Calarese, the number four car. We've picked him up on stream. He is catching the car off Freddie Park. No, in fact, Freddie's pulling away.
Calarese then running in second place to Freddie Parker. Let's pick up the car off Freddie Parker as he comes out onto the main straight. White front, yellow rear. Long, long day for Freddie. Freddie leads down the main straight. He's closing in on some traffic. So last round of qualifying now up and running. So hour and a half of track action. We've got five heats of spec. Freddie still leading this one. He'll be seeing if he can bump his way out of this. He uh, this into the top or move himself up into a better final. Freddie's car starting to look better and better and better. He's 2.2 seconds ahead of Calarese. And Freddie just uh, negotiating his way past some traffic. Lewis Parker watching on. Good run coming together for Freddie. In fact, that's the one car of Francesco Salva. Just let him go. Just having a look at the overalls for Modified, uh, as we expected. What do we got? Uh, Michael Olowski on three points. It's still all to play for going into the last round. Uh, Michael Olamski with two zeros, Oli Payne with one zero, Alex Hagberg with a zero, Mark Reinhardt with a zero. So any one of those four drivers could TQ. Michael Olamski currently got the fastest time. Uh, I think the, uh, yeah, Michael Olamski has got the fastest time out of those lot. I don't know what we had uh, from Alex Hagberg. Did he do a 47? No, he didn't. He was a 46. Mark Reinhard had a 47 earlier, but it was some three tenths slower, an 8 10 3 5 2. Ollie Payne hasn't done a 47. He was on for it, but then lost out right at the end of that one with that coming together with Marcus Mobers. So I think currently Orlowski's in the best position, but we've also got Ollie Payne, Alex Hagberg, and Mark Reinhard that could get themselves in the mix <coughs> with a faster time. Uh, they're going to need to do a faster time, basically, than Michael Olowski. So, Michael in the pound seat. I don't necessarily think the pace is um, is going to be in the track uh, to do what uh, what they managed. So, I think Michael Olowski looking pretty good for pole position at the moment. He's got the points in the bag, or hasn't got the points in the bag, as it were, with uh, scoring zeros. Uh, and he's also got the fastest time by about three tenths of a second from Mark Reinhardt. So uh, all to play for, though, in the last round of qualifying in Modified. Um, in Spec, it's a little bit more um, cut and dried. Oli Payne is definitely on the front row because he has got three round wins. Uh, Simon Lauter has taken the other two round wins. Simon's got the faster time. Uh, and having just a, a bit of a chat with Oli, um, he doesn't think that they've got the pace in the car now to beat that time that Simon managed earlier. So effectively, it's uh, kind of a little bit winner takes all between if Simon wins, uh, then Simon will be on pole position. Um, Ollie is locked into the front row. He's got his three zeros. Uh, it can only be matched by Simon Lauter. Uh, but Simon has got the faster time in his pocket that uh, Ollie doesn't think that they can get at now. So... Ollie's going to be watching Simon like a hawk, uh, focusing on his car. 
and doing what he can to get round. Freddie Parker still leading this one. Uh, and quite comfortably, actually. We get uh, Valentino Malietti, how to KO two top drivers who are fighting for TQ in eight minutes. Yeah, that was uh, a little bit unfortunate that uh, Ollie was. Uh, he, he, he didn't. He wasn't given a lot of space um, there by uh, by Marcus. It uh, arrived at uh, a great rate of knots and got turned round. But uh, there's. Mark Reinhardt recovering a car. We've got Freddie Parker still leading this one. Still running with him. He'll be happy with this. That'll be a good day's work for him. Lewis Parker at the foot of the rostrum, watching his brother circulating round. Predicted time. Let's have a look. A 40 in 8.06. So he's heading for a time uh, around six seconds quicker than Alessandro Calarese. Nice run coming together right at the end there. Freddie Parker going to bring this one home with 10 seconds left. There we go, Freddie Parker takes that with the uh, only driver to make it onto the 40 lap run as well. Calarese on a 39 lap, there we go, coming down the rostrum. Yeah, come on, yeah, bit of a fist pump. Tap on the shoulder from Lewis Parker. Yeah, that's a strut there from Freddie. Fist pump, he's happy. He knows what to do. A uh, bit of a conversation going on there between Javier and Marcus. That'll be to do with Ollie's coming together. That'll be a nod of acknowledgement from Marcus. I think he sort of recognises he probably could have given Ollie a little bit more space. Costly for Ollie. Uh, that would have given him the round win and at least matched uh, Michael Olowski on round points. So we're gonna see if we can find Alex uh, for just a bit of a chat with him. Thirty seconds to start. Tim Panster's, Alex D'Angelo, Andy Thompson, Tom Adams, Alex Seiter, Tim Janssen, Mark Payne, Marco Pansera, and Michael Laws. Tim Pan.